So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today on stormwater user fees, a destination or a first step. And I realize that many of us are anxiously waiting for the federal budget to come out. So we appreciate you taking some time out this afternoon to join us for this talk. Um, so I'm Sarah O'Neill, um, and I'll, I'm co-hosting today's event. Um, I'm a senior research associate at Smart Prosperity Institute, and uh, we are a national green economy research network um, think and policy think tank uh, based at the University of Ottawa. Um, so I'm familiar with stormwater user fees. Uh, if you check out our, our website, uh, we have a report on user fees from 2016. Um, but so today we're actually going to be hearing from Jen Slykhaus, who is a senior environmental coordinator for the town of Newmarket, Ontario. So Jen's going to be discussing with us how to create a stormwater user fee program, how the town of Newmarket implemented their own fee, and some of the advantages and disadvantages of a stormwater credit program in particular. Um, so today, Jen's presentation is going to last for about 30 minutes, um, and then after which we will open up the floor to questions. Um, during the presentation, so as you signed in, you were automatically placed on mute just so that we can keep the background noise to a minimum. Um, but after, during the presentation, you can use the chat box to send in a message. If it's a technical issue, we'll, we'll send you a private message back and try to get you straightened out. Um, if it's a, a, a general question for the end, we'll, we'll go through all those at the, at the end of the presentation. So um, if it's urgent and you need something, please send me a private message through that group chat. Um, and, and then if uh, we can hold all the questions to the end, and if you are on uh, your computer or, or calling in, then we can unmute you and we can have a more of a, a conversation at that point. Um, so at this point, I will just turn it over to Jen for her presentation. Thanks, Sarah. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so um, Newmarket established their uh, fee program January 1st of last year. And I'm not going to go through, much, through too much of the details with our program, but I, I will be focusing more on the community engagement uh, strategy that, that we use. Um, since we had just launched our program last year, we partnered with the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change to do a one-year research project on stormwater utility fee and landowner credit programs. And the idea was not just to conduct the research, but to provide um, a toolkit with uh, various elements that other municipalities could use and refer to uh, when they were looking at potentially implementing their own fee or credit program. So part of the toolkit includes a jurisdictional scan, which outlines the various ways fees and credits are calculated, um, how different municipalities calculate impervious surfaces, the lessons learned. Um, there's also some really great alternatives to fees, especially in the states where they've had utility programs for stormwater for a while. Um, and then the town's engagement strategy. So that's all included in the jurisdictional scan. And then we also drafted a, a bylaw, um, conducted several interviews with, with municipalities, uh, we provided our implementation manual, so kind of the step-by-step -step for all the elements of how to implement our fee. Um, so all of those resources are available uh, from myself. So if you are interested in kind of getting the package, um, I'll provide my contact information at the end and I can send that stuff along. Uh, we also uh, created an online tool which is kind of a one-stop shop um, for uh, municipalities who are looking for uh, information on stormwater utility fees. So hopefully everyone can see the stormwater charge policy tool um, that's on the screen. So when we were conducting interviews with municipalities, um, I asked, you know, what would have been a helpful resource uh, when you were creating your, your program? Um, and the answer was kind of having all the information in one place. So instead of reading through a report, um, we created this tool. There's two ways that you can use it. One, if you're looking to implement a stormwater uh, user fee program, you can, on the left-hand side, select 
um, kind of your municipality situation. So are you a small, medium, or large municipality? Um, you would select uh, what size you are in terms of population. Um, you could pick the type of fee that you're looking to implement on a residential and ICI level. Um, you could select tiered rate, flat rate. These are kind of the main ways fees are calculated. And then if you're looking to implement a credit program and in which sector, so if you're not going to have a credit in the ICI sector only or both residential and ICI. And as you start making these selections, municipalities with credit programs in Ontario and Canada, they start to refine uh, down here. So it'll actually match you with municipalities who have similar programs in place. Um, if you've made a selection and there's no cities that uh, match your criteria, there's probably a reason why no one went that route. Um, so you can keep playing around with it. And then you can select, oh, okay, Kitchener and Waterloo have one that I'm looking at implementing. It'll provide a little summary of what their program is in a, in a link to their website. Um, I also provided links to the alternatives to stormwater fees um, within the tool as well. And then it on the right hand side just uses the Google Maps based application so that all the fees are mat, or, uh, mapped across Ontario and Canada, including the ones in the states uh, that have um, that are under the beyond the stormwater fee category. So it's just kind of a nice uh, one stop shop to be able to find that inf information. All right, I'm going to go back to the presentation here. And the, the reason the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change in Ontario was keen on conducting this research is because over the past couple of years, the number of fees being implemented in Canada and in Ontario have dramatically increased. Um, and they're hoping to continue that trend so that municipalities are in a uh, fiscally better situation in order to manage their stormwater assets. Um, Particularly with this project, there was a focus on the Lake Simcoe watershed where the town of Newmarket is, is located. Um, and the reason for that was because they're really interested in reducing phosphorus loading to the lake, um, which is managed through the Lake Simcoe Protection Plan and the Lake Simcoe Protection Act, as well as our municipal stormwater master plans. Some of the highlights from the report um, this is a summary from around November of last year, so some of it could, could have changed. But the tiered flat rate I found was most popular that municipalities use. There are credit programs. If they are offered in any situation, it's usually mostly to the non-residential sector, so industrial, commercial. Um, not so much to the residential sectors, but um, if they do exist, credit programs are often too complicated and they don't really motivate any behavior change. I also looked at municipal budgets, probably around 45 to 50 different municipalities in Ontario and across Canada. Um, I looked at municipalities with populations under 200,000 and over 200,000 to see if there was a trend in increase in budgets for capital and operation and maintenance with the increase in population. So if you're a municipality over 200,000, there is kind of a steady trend. The more people you have, the more money you have. But for the smaller municipalities, as you can kind of see the scatter all over the place in the chart is there's no real consistency. Some municipalities have very small population, but they're per capita stormwater budgets uh, are gigantic, and then you have the opposite, which is true as well. I found if you're looking to have a healthy stormwater budget, it's around $45 per person um, in your municipality. The other highlight was just to see um, if municipalities, once they implemented a fee, did they just simply change how they were collecting the fee or did they increase the amount of funding that they were getting? 
Um, Ottawa was pretty much the only one that, that didn't start collecting more money. They just started, uh, they just switched to the fee in order to make how they were collecting their money more fair. Most other municipalities have around a 10 year phase in for their fee in order to achieve their sustainable funding. Um, so you could see most most municipalities are doubling, if not tripling, their, their stormwater budgets over the 10-year phase in time frame. Newmarket has a six-year financial plan uh, where, where we are phasing in those costs. And of course, the fee will increase annually in order to uh, achieve that. The main lessons learned from uh, not only the town, but uh, when surveying all the other municipal stormwater fee programs is that pushback will kill a program. Any pushback from, there might be a small residential group, um, particularly in the rural areas, because there's a lack of understanding about how they're connected to the stormwater system. Um, they might just see ditches and, and don't understand that ditches are part of, of stormwater infrastructure. Um, so there is caution to municipalities to, um, over communicate, I guess, or try to over communicate so that you don't get that, that pushback and people have a general understanding of A, what stormwater is and, and uh, how they're connected to it. There needs to be a decision between balancing the program to be fair, simple, and flexible. You don't want to have an over complicated program that people can't understand, um, but you don't want to have um, something that's so simple that doesn't provide uh, fairness across the board. People just don't connect with stormwater. Um, it isn't something that they probably think about in their everyday lives. So it's, it's really difficult in order for people to uh, pay attention to the communication that you're probably putting out about it. There isn't enough return on investment for the ICI sectors. So that's why there's such a low uptake in credit programs. Um, the credits that people are being provided just doesn't have that payback. Um, it's usually maybe five to 10 years and businesses just aren't uh, willing to take the time in order to receive such a small credit back. And there is a disconnect between the property managers, so the people looking to potentially implement best management practices on the properties to receive a credit versus the finance people who actually pay the stormwater fee bill. So the finance people may uh, be aware that there's a fee and they're paying the fee, um, but the property managers might not. We had that case in Newmarket where we held a business or large landowner session and only one, people, one person in the group knew that we had the fee program and they were all the property managers. Um, you need all the stakeholders in from the beginning when you're designing your program. And you need to design your program so that um, you're meeting the vision of your community and your municipality. So what do you want to achieve in the realm of stormwater management and then design a program working backwards from that? And then as indicated on the previous slide, um, will you phase in your costs over time or are you going to create a fee that gives you sustainable funding from day one. From the marketing aspect, what the town uh, ha has learned is that, um, and what we've started to go towards, and I'll, I'll get that in, into that in some of the later slides, is using a community-based social marketing approach where you're pushing information and, and trying to convince people uh, to change their behaviors um, by sending out different messages to different groups doesn't really work. People are bombarded with information all day and um, it might just not connect with them. What the town of Newmarket has tried to do is flip it and use a social innovation approach. So create something that's very intriguing and interesting to try to draw people to you. So you're not trying to chase them around with uh, the stormwater messaging. Um, people again don't really care about um, stormwater or how the majority of people, how it impacts the environment negatively. Um, the messaging really needs to connect to people's values and belief systems because those are very um, strongly ingrained in individuals. And if you can connect with those things, you'll probably get the message through a lot more. 
And a lot of the messaging tends to focus on the negatives of stormwater. Most times when I ask people what's the first thing that pops into their head when they hear the word stormwater, it's usually flooding. And flooding is a negative message that a lot of municipalities try to use uh, in order to create behavior change. And that doesn't work. Um, negative messaging is really good at eliciting fear in people, which in turn gets people not to take action. Um, it's the positive messaging that municipalities need to use in order to get people to participate uh, and create behavior change. And a lot of the, well, all the landowner credit programs are based around money. Uh, and as we know, money is not really a motivator. There are other, um, there are other motivating factors for residents in the business community. And how can we connect with those? And a lot of that is with focusing on the community needs and re establishing reconnections within those communities. And I'll get into that a little bit more. So learning from those lessons from the marketing aspect, uh, the town did a small um, engagement in September of last year. This was about nine months after we already had the fee in place. Um, we held a small session for our residents. We had about 25 people. We invited them uh, through various methods, um, but the main invitation um, indicated, you know, how could your stormwater fee work for you in improving your neighborhood? We didn't talk about flooding and, and the negative aspects potentially of stormwater. In the session, we asked uh, three questions. The first question was, what is the stormwater that's impacting your life? So this was not the literal stormwater, uh, but um, the things that were bugging people aren't working, their stresses and, and, and worries. Um, and we had the 25 people, they, they wrote them all out. Then we asked them what their hidden pleasures were. So what were the things they really liked to do? Um, we had people, you know, drink wine, read tabloid magazines, uh, go fishing. Um, it was kind of all over the place. Um, so again, what are those things that, that people really like and why do they like to do them? Then we asked the residents to put them together. So they had to select one of the issues from the stormwater. It could have been theirs or somebody else's. We asked them to choose one hidden pleasure, again, theirs or someone else's. And then they had to put them together to create a new activity that would help them deal with that initial issue or, or bring new flow, as we called it, into their life. The reason we did this was because, again, you're connecting to those values and those needs that people are, um, are really connected to. And you really speak to someone when you start talking about the stresses in their lives or the things that really get them excited. And then how could we bring stormwater, the literal stormwater, into that element and design something that would help address uh, their issues or design something that would um, contain one of their hidden pleasures. So we didn't lead in with the literal stormwater messaging, we kind of tagged that on afterwards. And they came up with all different kinds of cool activities and different experiences and projects that then we as a municipality could take and maybe integrate into a stormwater project. What the result was and what we're implementing now is a co-creation project. So what we're doing is working with residents to really go beyond just collaborating with them. We're actually designing an, um, spaces and redesigning an, an idle public green space um, that was identified that could potentially improve stormwater management in an area of town. We conducted a municipal class EA in an area that had a lot of flooding, um, and there were two preferred alternative, alternatives that were proposed to us from our consultant in order to tackle the flooding issues. Uh, one of them was uh, erecting a berm, and one of them was putting a stormwater facility or pond in one of these idle public green spaces that may address some of the stormwater and flooding issues, but it doesn't provide any other benefit to the residents. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. So the engineering department, which is the department I'm located in, 
is working with our recreation and culture department in order to bring those needs and values into the design of the berm or the, or the stormwater uh, management facility to create new recreational opportunities in the town. Um, so not only are we tackling the flooding, bringing recreational opportunities to that area of town, but then we're also addressing some of the neighborhood and community needs that were identified uh, in the previous uh, September session that we went through. By having the residents um, and businesses from that area involved from um, the get-go through the co-creation process, they really feel involved in that they're part of a higher purpose. A lot of the times municipalities just ask their residents um, you know, for their feedback or their input into a design that may already be partially completed. And then, you know, we take that under advisement and, and that's about it. But people really need to feel like they're a part of something. Uh, through this different kind of communication tactic, we worked with the Ontario Water Centre, who um, has a team who specializes in um, community engagement strategies, innovation, and behavior change uh, through stormwater management. In January, we held an event called I Wonder. Um, this was to kind of gather more feedback from the residents about what they'd like to see in these idle public spaces. So then when we go to redesign them, um, especially from a stormwater management perspective, we're trying to address those community needs. Um, we created two multi-sensory rooms in one of our community centers. One was the nighttime experience, which is a photo that you see here. We had the night sky, which moved uh, up on the ceiling there. We had movies playing, uh, sounds of animals, a uh, story playing. It was a, a little kind of campfire area. And it was a very, supposed to be kind of a passive experience. A lot of activities or experiences or um, experiences people want to get involved in are either passive um, and active or happen during the nighttime or during the day. So those were kind of the, the elements that we were trying to um, give to the residents who came to the, this event. So this was the passive nighttime. And then we had the active day on the other side. Um, here, we ask residents to um, either create something you know, out of the materials that were in the center of the room or to describe um, on the wall what elements they felt like they were missing in their spaces um, and in their communities. So then again, we could help try to address those um, when we were designing these stormwater management um, facilities or solutions. So this was held just on January 20, 27th of this year. We got a huge range of suggestions back. Um, we had around 170 people come, which was a great turnout when you're trying to get public feedback. Um, way better than our typical kind of PIC standard approach that municipalities use where you know, you're lucky if you get five to 10 people that, that show up. Um, so it was really great. People didn't know what to um, expect and we invited them using messaging that was kind of um, elusive. So trying to stick with that I wonder type of theme and that's what really drew people there. The majority of people came specifically for this event because they didn't quite know what it was and, and we piqued their curiosity, which is exactly what we were trying to do. So if anyone's going to try to kind of go out on a limb and do these this crazy kind of marketing communication tactics that uh, we've been piloting, um, it's really important to manage people's expectations. Um, if people come to a town event, especially if it's hosted by the engineering department, they, they already have a sense of what the event should be. Um, and that's not uh, something we, we really considered back in, in September. So that's why I, another reason we partnered with our recreation and culture department, because if an event's hosted by recreation and culture, uh, you get a different picture in your mind than from the engineering department. Um, it really does provide a sense of something new and people really appreciated that we were taking a, a new approach and it brings in different audiences um, to the table. Um, which then gives you different ideas when you're trying to implement something. 
um, keeping it simple is really important in terms of the messaging and the design of the engagement. You don't want it to have it too confusing so people don't know what's going on or what the purpose is. Keeping it uh, subtle is uh, one of the things we always try to do. Again, not leading in with the stormwater messaging, but kind of sneaking that in at, at the end. Um, again, it helps manage with, with the expectation approach and then keeping it going. So we held the session in September, then we had this one in January. Now we're having another one in March where we are going to be presenting concept designs based on the feedback that the residents provided in terms of the various activities and experiences they want to have in their public spaces. Um, so uh, a small group will be providing their, their feedback on the concept designs. The benefits of, of going this, this way, um, again, you really start creating a new conversation which brings new players and perspectives. And then our role as a municipality has changed um, to bring the community together and to co-create new projects, which puts us in a more positive light as well. Um, it starts creating a new planning model for stormwater management where neighborhoods and these small public spaces are now part of an integrated public stormwater management system. And each one of these elements um, or each one of these spaces hopefully provides something a, a little bit unique to, to the community. Um, stormwater then becomes reframed as an asset instead of a liability, so switching the messaging from negative to positive. And for us, it created a bridge between, you know, kind of those silos that are established in organizations so that we could collaborate um, on something really innovative. Our engineering and recreation departments have never before worked on a project from beginning to end. It was usually, you know, engineering design something and then uh, recreation then has to figure out how to program it. But, but now we're actually working together and it's, uh, really strengthened our relationship. So some final thoughts on kind of if you're looking to develop a stormwater fee uh, or credit program is really try to be creative. Don't focus on the hard targets. So a lot of credit programs focus on, you know, peak flow reduction um, and you have to hire an engineer to do all these calculations. And again, by the time someone hires an engineer to go through all that, it's, they just see it as not worth it to even participate in the beginning. Really try to focus on strengthening those community connections and collaboration and co-creating. That's what the businesses are looking for. They're looking to be connected to their communities um, and the residents are, are looking to be connected to their communities and, and neighbors as well. You can't really over communicate and educate prior to implementing or thinking of implementing some sort of stormwater user fee program. Um, you know, some municipalities take two or three years because it's, again, you don't kind of have all that messaging laid out up front. You'll get that small pushback, which will kill a program. And as the title of the presentation suggested that the fee is only the first step. So, you know, now that the town is collecting our fee, how do we make it work for us as a municipality? But more importantly, how can we build with nature and people in mind and really give something back uh, to the community? So that's what, that's what we're trying to do. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning, you can contact me for the resources that I laid out at the beginning, the jurisdictional scan, the bylaw templates, all those elements that you would need in, to get you started on implementing a stormwater charge. Um, as well as the link to our stormwater charge website. So then you can see more about the town's uh, actual program. And with that, um, I'd just like to thank everyone for, for participating and I'll take any questions. Thank you, Jen. That was a really <laughs> fascinating presentation. Um, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning is that we are recording um, the webinar so and we will post it online so um, it'll be available to share this information um, to other folks who maybe weren't able to attend today or who you think would be um, interested in this information um, and since we are a small group I'll just go ahead and unmute everybody
Um, so you can go ahead and ask your questions or you can type them in the chat box and we'll go from there. No questions? <laughs> That makes my job easier. <laughs> <laughs> this makes it a nice short and sweet <laughs> webinar. No? If people don't, they can always email me afterwards as well if they have questions. Absolutely. You can take the information. I really want to go through your report later, so I will probably have questions for you as well. <laughs> but Okay, well, we will wrap things up then. Um, feel free to contact Jen for any additional information, and also feel free to Contact us at Smart Prosperity if you have any additional thoughts or comments. Um, to everyone who has registered for the webinar, um, we'll send out um, uh, an email probably in the next day or so with uh, a link to an evaluation and also a link to the webinar recording. Um, so feel free to pass that around. And thank you all for joining us today.